Hi, my name is Colin Sandilis. I'm a director here at Mercury Filmworks. I was also a co-director of Duke's Game. I'm going to be showing you some of the rigs that we created and also explaining why we chose to do some of the things we ended up doing on the short. Uh, so this is Mouse. Uh, you can see right away that Mouse is a lineless character. So one of the reasons why we decided to do this is because uh, with lineless, it's a lot more forgiving when it comes to animation. Uh, you can layer parts on top of each other uh, that have no relation to each other. I can use Mouse's thigh to help build up her torso. I can do whatever I want because uh, with lineless, uh, there's no exterior line defining anything, so I don't have to go in and delete these lines. Uh, so it's a big reason why we decided to do this on Duke's game. Um, we also, even though it is lineless, we did add a line texture to the character. You can see it here on the jaw and the ear. Uh, the reason why we did this is because uh, for the close-ups, we wanted to actually animate the line and give it some more life. So one of the great things about Harmony 22 is that it actually has a line texture module uh, that animates a line for you. It's something that we did here at Mercury uh, for a long time, but it was a pro uh, proprietary uh, kind of process. Um, the other thing with that process was that the, art the artists working on the scenes didn't have any kind of accessibility to it. It was all done via the comp stage uh, after the animation was done. Um, we did have a few workarounds to kind of uh, play with this, to let the animator animate this, um, but it ended up being a lot of work. Uh, so this, this module is a nice uh, addition to the whole suite that we have, um, and it's really exciting that the rest of the world has it now too. Um, but it essentially animates the line for you to give it a little bit more life. Um, you, you can see this kind of line texture on Duke's game. Um, all the close-ups of of Mouse's face will have this line. Even Nitro, even though he's a, he's a robot, he has this line texture animated. Um, and it just breathes a little bit more life into things. So back to why we did lineless. Speed was a huge factor for us, um, especially for, Sh for Shane and myself. Uh, we want to get lost in our animation. And with heavy rigs, uh, that, that isn't necessarily something that can happen because you have to wait uh, for the software to respond. Um, that's because we're putting too much into it. We want to push things too far. Uh, but we found with uh, Harmony 22, things were actually a lot faster for us. Deformer performance uh, was incredibly fast. We had a lot of uh, additional kind of performance tweaks. And by doing lineless, we weren't showing uh, character textured, textured lines on the entire thing. So uh, that helped out as well. So deformers are very, very fast uh, and speedy. Um, you can do whatever you want with them. Uh, animating with this was a real pleasure. Um, for Shane and myself, again, going back to speed of things, it was so important for us because we like getting lost in the zone of animation. Uh, back when we were working on paper, everything was uh, direct. As soon as you draw a line, it's there, and you can, you can get lost in things. Um, but when you push the technologies too far, things get a little bit slow, and, it, it's, and it, you don't get into that zone quite as easily. But we found with... Uh, Duke's game, we were actually able to achieve that kind of zone where it doesn't matter what's happening around you, you're able to just focus on your work and kind of get lost in it, and then things just flow. Uh, you weren't waiting on things to respond. Uh, so that was a, a really nice plus for us. Animation for these characters was uh, very interesting because we had very different style characters. We have the Duke who's extremely animated, almost over-animated, stretching and squashing, doing all these crazy shapes. Uh, that was very important for us from the very beginning. We wanted this over-the-top uh, announcer. And you know, we always played with the idea that, that Duke was actually a hologram, so he could do anything. Uh, we, 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 uh, we were thinking even having like uh, holographic emitters that went around the stadium so like Duke could interact with people. But we kept it at the screen, uh, one, because that's if we did holographic emitters, it would have been kind of crazy to actually achieve. Um, but two, it's, it's just a center screen that where we can, everyone can see Duke and can kind of keep it contained and you can kind of let him go wild. So Duke was the wildest of the bunch in terms of animation. And, and in the short, you can see how kind of crazy he is. Mouse was our hero. Uh, Mouse had to be kind of more reserved because she was in a situation that she didn't necessarily want to be in. Um, we wanted her to be badass. Uh, we designed her that way to look as badass as possible. Um, and for the most part, animation on mouse was pretty standard. Uh, we didn't do anything kind of too crazy. Um, 
we just wanted fluid, nice, fun animation for Mouse so everyone could root for her and kind of want to be inspired by her as well. And then when it came to Nitro, uh, Nitro was the main villain of our story. He had to be menacing, he had to be scary. He didn't exert any kind of, he didn't, he didn't waste energy if he didn't need to. So at the very beginning, he was just standing there and he was actually toying with Mouse. Like he lets Mouse go ahead of him, get a head start on, on, the, on him on the whole race because he's so overly confident that he can actually beat Mouse and it's not a problem. It's just another, another day for, for Nitro. Um, we actually struggled with Nitro's design in the very beginning. We, we wanted him to be more rigid, but then we found that if he was too rigid, he couldn't actually do the poses we needed. So we kind of created a, a, piston, a, a piston leg system for him so he can actually, he worked kind of like a hydraulic so his legs could actually uh, contract and expand easily. Before it was just two metal plates and we couldn't actually get the posing we needed. So we had to do a very last minute uh, design change to Nitro. Uh, but for the most part, again, he was very straightforward, but Duke is really the star of our, our short uh, in terms of animation. We really wanted to make him as fun as possible and express so much with his mouth. We didn't actually create a, a model sheet for his lip sync. Um, and because of that, we ran into problems, animators, just couldn't get Duke quite right. Um, so, you know, in the future, if we did this again, we'd make sure we'd have a proper model sheet for, for Duke. But we really wanted to see what people could bring to the table for him and what was possible. For the animation teams themselves, there wasn't too much of a challenge because of all the pre-planning we did. Uh, we, we tried to plan everything uh, to the tiniest detail to make sure that the animation team could actually get the animation done uh, on time. Um, so for them, there wasn't a huge challenge. The challenge was more on myself and Shane, putting all the pieces kind of together. Uh, the crowd shots at the very beginning when you see Duke's crowd watching the game, uh, some of those shots were, were very, very heavy. Uh, but for the most part, we animated things in a smart way, so we're not seeing everything all at once. We use our displays to only display the characters we need to work on. Uh, but from a technical standpoint, those were probably the most complicated shots to animate. Uh, inside the tunnel, uh, all, the sh all, the, all the backgrounds were created in CG. Um, so our CG team actually just created a straight tunnel and rigged it in a way that could be bent in any way we needed. So that was another aspect that the animators never had to worry about. They didn't have to worry about consistent speed. We always tried to make sure the animators were only worrying about animating the acting performances or the, uh, the action performances. I didn't want them worried about technical problems like moving the background at the same time. So it's just animators are doing what animators do best. The biggest advice I can give to animators starting in Harmony for the first time is to try to find a network of animators who have already animated in this software. And I say that just because even at our studio here at Mercury, we've had animators that didn't know you could in between keyframes. They didn't know that you could use deformers. Some animators were literally animating scenes frame by frame. Now, that, that was a failure on our part sometimes, but at the same time, if you have a core group of people that you can talk to about issues that you're having with the software, because to be fair, it is kind of daunting the first time you open it. You're not quite sure what to do, but if you're in a community uh, that has good experience with the software, they can show you things that makes it a lot easier. Uh, things like um, master controllers are very helpful because in the past we would always have to have a separate scene opened up to copy keys over, so rotations, posing, uh, reuse. All that is, all that is accessible now uh, inside of Harmony itself, which was a huge kind of learning curve for a lot of us old timers who are used to working in it in the old way. Um, but this is kind of an industry standard approach of having some sort of controller window that allows you to quickly select the things you need. Learning deformers and how they work and how they actually animate is also a huge thing I try to tell anyone for starting in this software is that, you know, Harmony is the world's stupidest in-betweener. It's gonna literally take what you give it, point A to point B, find the middle ground, and go from there. It's still up to you to create keys to help move that motion, right? So 
this is a tool that we use to create animation, but at the same time, it isn't a tool that will do everything for you. You still have to learn and understand animation to use this tool correctly. And going to a community uh, that knows how to use this tool well, maybe in ways that aren't industry standard, will be helpful for you to learn how to use this software. This production was great for me in the sense that I could try more things on the pre-production level, uh, storyboarding and just story flow. It's something that wasn't necessarily available to us because we are, for the most part, a service studio. We're breaking out of that. We're, we're creating our own shows like Hilda and some other things that we're working on. But for the most part, it's somebody else coming to us with their idea, their story, and we're essentially creating that. But for Duke's game, we, we got to, we, we basically had a blank check to do whatever we wanted. Um, and we really took that to heart. We did exactly what we wanted for this short. Um, and the energy that that alone created, um, I wanted to quit my current job and just work solely on Duke's game kind of thing. It was just, it was so refreshing and so exciting to work on a project that had true creative freedom. And that was a huge opportunity for everyone here, and I'm so happy we had a chance to be part of it. Exploring how uh, story structure works, you know, why doing a scene just because is not the best idea. Um, that's something that, as a studio as a whole, we're trying to move towards. We want to be the world's best storytellers. And uh, this was just like a little taste of that, and it was really fun to be part of. When it comes time to choosing elements and if they should be 2D or 3D, it really comes down to how often does the perspective change on this thing? Like the, the, the hoverboards or the skateboards in this case. We wanted that to be a 3D prop because we didn't want animators to have to worry about prop perspective, perspective all the time. Um, we toyed with the idea of having um, an FBX object inside of Harmony. But for us, uh, that didn't quite work out, so we used a master controller system of a 3D modeled skateboard or hoverboard. Uh, so again, we let the animators only worry about animating and not, from a technical level, worry about, is this the proper perspective? And same thing with the tunnel. The, we, the reason why we did the tunnel in CG was because we didn't want anyone struggling with perspective. And the tunnel is essentially just a repeat of itself. So it just made sense to make this thing in CG. Um, and, and I'm really glad we did because we were able to get it done so quickly with, this, with the tunnel as a CG element. And we had flexibility to do whatever we wanted. Um, and it was so easy to change after the fact as well, at least for us. Uh, if we were doing a BG paint, because Shane painted everything inside of Harmony, um, that would have required Shane to do additional work that he didn't have time for because Shane is, is a master of every single um, aspect of production. He can do design, he can do animation, he can do comp, he can do, he's doing the music. Uh, so if we had to do revisions on backgrounds, it would have taken time away from you know, finalizing the project and, and getting out the door. For us personally too, characters in 3D, we have experience in it, but we wouldn't get the animation we wanted. We wanted people to go back to their, to their roots of, some people actually draw a lot of the, their posing. Uh, we didn't use the rigs, we did a, a mixture of both. Um, and we just wanted people to have fun. If they had to do a new process they weren't used to, uh, it wouldn't have turned out the way it did. And I think you can, you can definitely see the passion in all the animation of posing. Um, and that's, that's our bread and butter here. We know how to manipulate the rigs in a way that makes things look hand-drawn. That was a little behind the scenes of Duke's game. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the short.